Hey John, um, offenses are uh, averaging, uh, scoring is way up this year in the NFL, and I'm um, sure so there's a lot of reasons why that might be the case, but um, I'm just wondering if fans not being a part of the, the games, uh, especially you know for road teams' offenses, do you think that plays any bit of a role in, in how offensive operations are, are operating and the scoring being up this year? Yeah, I'm sure that's one of the reasons, no doubt, but... Um... It's only halfway through the season, so let's see if it continues. Yeah, we saw him and Arnett uh, kind of warm up with the team today. Obviously, he wasn't dressed out, but I, I know you said he was headed to Houston to get a, a reevaluation. Did you have any, any update on his success? Yeah, his evaluation went well, and um, I think he'll be uh, be able to start practicing again tomorrow. But uh, I have nothing else to report other than that. Tony, you got to meet with a lot of uh, college quarterbacks coming to the draft during your, your old job. What's allowed these guys to come in and be successful right away, like, like Herbert is and some of the other guys who've been able to do it? Well, I think, uh, number one, they've been given opportunities to do it early in their career. You know, the old school method was let them sit for a year and watch. I think that's part of the reason. Secondly, um, a lot of these guys are very talented. They're f way further along throwing the football, understanding how to attack defenses. They do it year round. Uh, a lot of these guys have their own private quarterback coach. Uh, so they're, they're, they're further along, I think, in terms of training and uh, in terms of the overall passing game nowadays as opposed to 25, 20 years ago. Hey, John, at, the, at this point, uh, a, a year ago, your, your, your rookie draft class and plus Alec Ingles had really asserted themselves and really kind of jumped out as being something special. And now this year, you know, through no fault of their own, because a lot of them have been hurt, there's been some flashes, but but not anything really spectacular. I'm curious, I mean, now that some of these guys are getting healthy again, how much of a lift can you get from guys like you know, just Ruggs and Edwards and Arnett, you know, the rest of the way? I pretty much forgot who we drafted, Jerry. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we, we're getting something out of our rookies. Arnett's been hurt. Ruggs has been hurt. Edwards has been hurt. We had a virtual draft. We had a virtual offseason. You know, virtual is for the birds. But uh, I think it uh, doesn't help, you know, get these young guys ready uh, as it did in years past. But um, we like our young guys. Uh, John Simpson has started a couple games. But just the beginning for them and uh, I think there's reasons why maybe they're uh, you know still waiting to explode onto the scene but I'm, I'm very confident in them. Hey John obviously your focus is going to be on the game at hand whoever you play next but when you look at the schedule you pull back and you look at the schedule as a whole how, how big an opportunity is it for you guys with three straight games against three straight uh, AFC West divisional opponents? I don't look past the Chargers at all. You know, they they had the Buccaneers down 24 to 7. They had the Saints down 20 to 3. They had the Chiefs beat. They had them third and 20 and lost the game. We're not looking past the Chargers. We got a lot of guys hurt. We're just trying to figure out how to get ready uh, to put our best foot forward again on Sunday. But you're right. I mean, it's a it's a great opportunity. But if we look any further ahead than tomorrow, we're not very smart. Coach, the adjustments you made on defense for Cleveland, can you apply those for the Chargers as well, or is there danger in doing that and not changing it up? We're going to try to change it up and adjust every week based on who we play. And we only had 23 minutes of possession on defense. That, that was a big help. Uh, but uh, we're tweaking it. We're trying to put our players in the best position to succeed and also uh, to try to attack the opponent. But it'll never be the same every week. We will tweak it, and uh, this week will be no no different. John, just wondering if there's any uh, update on Trent Brown in terms of his availability for practice or, or the game on Sunday. No, I'm, you know, Trent is here today. He's in good spirits, and uh, I'm not going to get into to everything. There have been some reports out there, and I'm not going to cover Trent Brown until he's back on the field with us. But he's in good spirits. I'm told everything is fine. But right now, uh, I'll just leave it at that and answer any other questions that I can. Hey, John, uh, Josh Jacobs mentioned this last week, but have you seen him take on more of a leadership role this season? Yes. Um, 
the way he practices. I wish you guys could see him practice. I do miss seeing you guys, by the way. But he's a great finisher. He's got um, great stamina. You know, he carries 31 times. A lot of backs would come out on Wednesday on a hot day and take the day off. Uh, he, he led our team in terms of effort again today. He sits up in the meeting room. He asks great questions. He takes notes. He's the real, real deal. And I can be. I could not be any proud, more proud of Josh Jacobs. Let's do one more, Adam. How, uh, how valuable has a guy like Denzel Good been for you guys this year, just kind of filling in, do, doing what you need him to do? I mean, he's he's been sensational. You know, the day we go out there, Colton didn't practice. You know, Gabe was limited. Uh, we, we did a good job uh, resting Rodney. Uh, Trent obviously is out. Incognito's been out, Gabe. I, I mean, uh, Denzel could probably play all four or five positions. He might be able to play two at a time if, if we need him to. But he's been great. Doesn't say a word. Low maintenance or no maintenance. And um, real pros pro. We're happy to have him. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys.